Welcome to the She Heals the World talk show with Dr. S, the place to hear stories of heart-driven women creatively living free. Our episodes highlight conversations and insights that support the values of self-care, creative and personal freedom, slower living, happiness, health, and wellness to help you live your absolute best life. To be a part of the movement and join the conversation, step inside our free Facebook group, She Heals the World, and say hello. It brings me great joy to bring you our next episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the She Heals the World talk show. So today is a special episode because we are celebrating the launch of Master Coach. And so if you've been paying attention, All of the content that we have been releasing over this last week has been centered around the power of coaching. Master Coach is our new Success Coach Certification Academy where we certify women and men in coaching and the process of coaching that you can use in every niche is what we call success coaching, which is focused on the science of goal achievement. Um, And so it is so appropriate to use today's episode to talk all about achieving an impossible goal. And, you know, this really struck me because I noticed that sometimes when we are, whether we're coaches or we're not coaches, we set goals in our business and we forget that most of the goals that we have set, although they may feel impossible, they are totally achievable with the right tools and skill sets in place. And so you don't always have to be working with a coach to achieve a goal, obviously. You can for sure coach yourself on how to achieve that goal, but I thought it would be important today to talk about how to achieve not just a regular goal, but a goal that feels impossible for you. This came up for me when I was trying to lose weight. I was trying to lose about 30 pounds and everything that I tried did not work. I tried not eating. (laughs) I tried cutting out carbs. I tried exercising. I tried everything. And the only thing that ended up working was kind of like a combination of all of those things. And the principle that ended up kind of being the driver that turned things around for me was consistency. And it was doing what I was already doing, but just doing it for a longer time. And I think that when we set goals, we want those goals to happen overnight, right? For if you're in business, you want to make your first million dollars or you want to make your first hundred thousand dollars or build your first million dollar or multi-million dollar startup or nonprofit or whatever it is. And if you are dealing with some health concerns, you may want to lose a hundred pounds or even 50 pounds. And we set these goals knowing that they are true to our heart and that they're things that we really want but they feel really far away. They feel almost impossible. And so what happens is we check out before we even get close to achieving the goal. When I tried to lose 30 pounds, this was about four years ago, I had already convinced myself that losing 30 pounds was impossible. I was in the middle of my doctoral program and I literally said out loud, it is easier for me to get my doctorate at an Ivy League school than it is for me to lose weight. I said that out loud. And it wasn't until I was in a coaching program and a mentor said that another one of her students, and this is how God works, another one of her students said the exact same thing. Her students said to her, it's easier for me to finish my PhD than to lose this last 10 pounds. That's what, that was what her students said to her. And she said it on our call. And immediately it was a light bulb moment because I got this eerie feeling in my stomach where I thought, oh my God, I say the same thing. (laughs) So either A, it really is true, or B, I had some serious limiting beliefs that I needed to shift about losing weight. Thankfully, I did lose 20 of the 30 pounds that I had gained. And, um, and it's still an ongoing journey, right? Our bodies and staying in shape is just an ongoing thing. 
But the weight only started to come off once I actually started to believe that it was possible. And when I believed that it was possible, I started to see small results. And then I started to build on those results. And so it's the same thing in business. And I should have made this connection sooner. But when I first left my nine to five job, I was already on a high. I had already created a multi seven figure school. I had um, already kind of risen to the top in my um, traditional field. I was starting to consult, but I had never done anything like create $100,000 on my own, like without being in a traditional nine to five job and working a traditional kind of nine to five schedule. But because my confidence was already high, I already knew I could create $100,000. I was kind of like, I already did this. I did that. I've been consulting. Like, of course, if I quit my job, I can, I can do it. And so I literally quit. And within 30 days, I had already lined up the contracts to sign to create over $100,000 within my first 90 days in business on my own. And I don't say that to brag, but I say that because I truly believe that because I knew it was possible and I believe that it was possible, I didn't see any barriers. I just went for it. And I think there are a lot of people when they set goals for themselves in their business, they have all this stuff and all this baggage And that baggage prevents them from achieving the goals. And it's not like the goals are impossible, right? So like my weight loss felt completely impossible to me. And for other people, the goal that I achieved, which was making the income in my business when I first got started, may have felt completely impossible to them. But I demonstrated that it's possible. And if and for the people who believe that with their whole heart, that they could do it too, they have made success and gotten results. And also for me, once I shifted my mindset and believed that I could actually lose weight and stuck in it long enough and focused on it long enough, it started to become possible. Now, I don't want to make this an airy fairy thing and act like, oh, if you just believe it, if you believe it, you can achieve it, right? That's something we heard all throughout our life. But I do want to give you some tips for setting a an impossible goal or a goal that feels impossible and giving you some support on how you can actually see success and make progress towards that goal. So again, impossible goals, losing 100 pounds, making your first 100,000, making your first million dollars, finding the man of your dreams or finding the woman of your dreams or creating a, a deeper relationship with the person that you are married to or in a, in a relationship with. All of these things may feel like they're huge hurdles because there are other things that are taking our attention that make us feel like these things are never going to happen. But I can tell you that there is a system for goal achievement. And that system is the foundation of what we teach in our Success Coach Certification Training School. And it is also a system that you can use to coach yourself through achieving goals. Now, I always say there is, again, I want to honor my beliefs because I do believe that working with a coach is the most effective way, a good coach, a good and highly trained coach is the most effective way to achieve impossible goals. And I say that because there is energy and synergy that you get from collaborating with someone else on something. There's accountability that they put in place. There is this kind of connection that you have, knowing that you and this other person together are working towards this thing, even if you're doing the work, they're holding the space and holding you accountable and giving you the support and kind of pushing you along the way. So that gives you the confidence to continue to fail and get up and try again and fail and get up and try again. And so there totally is power in that connection that you get with a coach. There's also the thought partnership where you're with someone and they can reflect to you what they hear you saying and what might be a better thing to try and to give you that feedback. And so there are all of those things that um, research has now proven are effective with helping you to achieve your goals. But if you cannot enlist in the support of a coach, you can also coach yourself through the process and it may be harder, but it is absolutely possible to achieve an impossible goal. So I want you to think about 
a goal that you may have set for yourself and not something that comes easy. I want you to think about a goal that may have been a really challenging goal that you feel like in your head you want to have accomplished it, but in your heart, you kind of feel like this is like an impossible thing. And when you have that goal, I want you to write down all of the beliefs that you hold about achieving that goal. And the reason why I want you to do that is because it's not always present that you have beliefs that you cannot achieve that goal, right? You may think in your head that, oh no, I can achieve that goal, I got this. But in reality, once you start to unpack those beliefs and you write down what you really believe and think about that goal, and if you truly in your gut really, really, really believe that it's not possible, I can tell you that even if you are working with a coach or even if you are working with someone to get to that goal, it's probably not going to happen. And so here's what you can do in the meantime. You can work on shifting your beliefs around that goal. And that will come from building up a series of small, easy wins as you're moving towards achieving that goal. Or B, you can X that goal off your list and create a goal that you feel like is more attainable. Okay, so when you have an impossible goal, the first thing to do is to write down your beliefs about the goal. And I'll give you an example with that. So if we're going to take my 30 pound (laughs) goal of losing weight, my 30 pound weight loss goal, and my beliefs about the goal were, I could never do what I needed to do to reach this goal because I love cake and I love pie and I love chips and I love bread and I love cheese a little bit too much to be able to cut that out and actually lose this weight. I also believe that A, even if I did cut that out, I still would only stay at my regular weight. I would never lose the weight because I am not the kind of person that can lose weight. Then I thought, that um, even if somebody helped me lose the weight and told me what to eat and I got the willpower to do it, that I still had underlying issues that would cause me to overeat even what I'm supposed to be eating and so I would not lose the weight. And then I felt like no matter how hard I work out, I'm just going to build muscle on top of fat and I'm still going to be the same weight. <laughs> So I had all these beliefs, and then that kind of summed out to be, I cannot lose weight. That was just my belief system. And there was nothing anybody could tell me that would make me think otherwise. And that was my story for years and years and years and years, until until I looked at my beliefs about my business. And I started to hit goals in my business that I was really excited about. Like when I quit my job, I finally like, boom, I made my first 100K on my own, by myself, me. Nobody gave me that paycheck. No company gave me that paycheck. I was able to create that all on my own. I did that. Why couldn't I lose weight? Then I thought, I maybe can't like finish my doctorate. And then I got to like the final level of my doctorate and and I started to see that, okay, I could finish my doctorate. I actually might graduate. So I'm like, well, if I was able to do that, why can't I lose weight? Then I came up with the story of, well, even if I get my doctorate, I still can't lose weight. I'm smart enough to get my doctorate. I'm not smart enough to lose weight. That was my story after that. Then I thought, okay, back to my business. I want to create, I wanted to create like something like $50,000 in like um, through my online course launch without having to work one-on-one with clients. I just wanted to be able to create it. I wanted it to be passive income and I just wanted it to come in. And first, I didn't know if that was possible. I knew that you could create income in your business, but I didn't think you could create income in your business without like putting in all the time and energy that it takes to fulfill a contract or a consulting contract or work one-on-one with a coaching client. I didn't think about the whole online course, all that jazz. But I set the goal and I put all my energy towards it. And then I ended up 
making $65,000 passively from that launch. Like I was able to create that in my business. This was the next year. So then I said to myself, okay, I just hit some goals in my business that I didn't, I knew my, I knew I could create income on my own, but I did not know that I could create income this way on my own. And so I just blew my mind with that. And that's possible for me. And if getting my doctorate is possible for me, why don't I just do what I was doing in those goals, which was keep on going, even when you feel like you want to quit, just still keep going further and see what happens. So I gave myself a year to get it together. And I said to myself, when you feel like you're going to quit, I want you to just keep pushing anyway, just to see what will happen. So I went through a month of like cutting out. I I started to see this local nutritionist person, which was like the hundredth person that I saw. And she gave me the whole regular thing, cut out the carbs, cut out the gluten, cut out the dairy, eat, you know, vegetables and protein, like the whole boring thing. And I was completely done with that. I already said was not going to work. And I said to myself, well, try it. And then when you feel like you can't go anymore, keep going. And I did. And after two months of doing that, (laughs) yes, I was literally giving myself a week of my diet and then saying, I didn't lose a pound. I can't do this. Or a week of working out and be like, oh my God, I just gained five pounds. What the hell? I'm never doing this again. That was my story. Even I would maybe push three weeks sometimes and not see results and then like completely quit. But this time I gave myself like two months. And I started to see results little by little by little. And then I kept building on those small wins. And then once I started building on those small wins, my mindset started shifting. And I went from believing that something wasn't possible to believing that it was possible because I was seeing small wins happen along the way. So here is the rule book. The step-by-step guide. Pay attention to what I just said, guys. The first step when you're dealing with an impossible goal or a goal that you feel like is impossible is to write the goal down. Then write down your limiting beliefs about that goal. And if you have a belief system that supports that that goal is not possible, where inside you really deeply believe this is not possible for me, because if you did believe it was possible for you and you truly believe that you would have already started taking action and moving towards it. So more than likely, if it's in your impossible goal category, it's because you believe that it's not possible for you. Then I want you to start to take small action steps towards that goal. And when you feel like you can't go any further, I want you to push through and go even further. There's this little circle of like when most people quit and then like you're like right outside of the glory. Like the glory is like the next circle right when most people, 95% of people stop. I want you to push past that barrier and get to that next part, right? That 5% where those people are the ones who took the extra step. And that, and start to get small wins there so that then you can shift the belief from this is not possible for me to this might be possible for me. We want to shift the belief from this is not possible for me to then this might be possible for me. And eventually, I'm sure you already know where I'm going, eventually you're going to start to say this is possible for me and you'll start to get back in alignment with that goal. Now, if for some reason you push past that circle and you still have not started to get small wins towards your goal, like you're just not taking action, things are just not coming together, like you really, deep down in your heart, do not feel like that goal is possible for you, and you don't even feel like you should be moving towards that goal, then that goal might not be in alignment with your purpose. So yes, I'm I'm gonna get deep here, and I'm gonna say that again. If you are setting a goal, for example, I wanna make my first $100,000 as a stylist on my own from clients. I don't wanna have 
be hired by corporations right now. I don't want to be uh, working in anybody's nine to five. Like I want to on my own, have my own fashion influencer business. And I want to be able to generate $100,000 worth of income for clients. Let's just say that's your goal. And every time it's time for you, you wrote down all your limiting beliefs about it, which may say, I don't think that's possible for me. I don't see any st other stylists doing this. I don't, I, I can't believe that other people actually created a business, being a stylist or having a blog, all of that comes up. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to try to push through that anyway. And I'm going to start taking actions towards that goal. And you find that every day that you wake up, you don't take any action. It's like something's just pulling you and keeping you stuck. You try to get up and you try to make a blog post or, or make a post on Instagram and you just can't come up with the right words or you try to have a conversation with somebody about the work that you're doing. You try to make a Facebook post or you try to get on TV or collaborate with another influencer and it's just not, every time you think of a new idea, your body internally just pulls you away and says no. This is a sign of that goal possibly not being in alignment with your life's purpose. Now, co most coaches, and, and this is what I do, we look at our values and our life purpose kind of synonymously. So if you are somebody who's like, I don't believe in life purpose, you know, all that, that's fine. You can call it your value system. But typically when you have a goal that you are shut down about, and it's an impossible goal that may be possible for other people, but when it comes to you, it just doesn't happen. That means that that goal is not in alignment with your values and you do not and should not ever pursue that goal. And if you want to check, a good check would be to write down all your values. And I have this, I do this exercise in my um, Success Coach Training Academy. And so I'm sorry, I don't have it right here to share with you guys because it would be very kind of uh, difficult and challenging to facilitate on a podcast. But what I do is essentially you write down all your values. You have a values list. You write down all your values. You circle your top like 10 values. Then you go back to the list and you like underline your top five. Then you look for people who embody those values and you start to see if there are other values that maybe you should have considered that you didn't consider. You revisit the list. You add those values back in. Then you go back and you select your top three. And for some people, if they have certain values, like I think my top three were integrity, health, um, and I, I can't remember the third one. But all that to say, if I'm doing anything or if I'm in any kind of business or job that will jeopardize my integrity or that will jeopardize my health, it's not going to happen. I don't care what goal it is. Um, that's a big deal for me. And so when I was in my nine to five job and I was completely burned out and I felt like it was dancing on that borderline between being unhealthy for me because I was I had no time to work out, to exercise, to care for my body. And then as you guys know, I had this big like weight loss goal dangling. On top of that, I had other health issues that were coming up because I was just burning myself, burning the candle at both ends. So if I'm in a situation like that and I need to set a goal to get better in that job or do something differently to get me to a goal that's aligned with that job, I'm not going to do it. It's just, it's not going to happen. My body's going to shut down. My body's going to say, nope, that's, we're not working towards that. Why would you want more of what you don't want, right? So that is a possibility. And so there is no solution for you if you're setting an impossible goal that's not aligned to your life purpose and or your values. And sometimes once you start to take action or try to take action and your body shuts down and you're like, nope, it's not happening, then that's a goal that you need to toss. So if that is not the case, however, and you have wrote down your limiting beliefs about the goal. And then you have started to make small wins, people. Meaning not like cutting out all the bread at one time. And if you're in business, not like trying to make 100K in a day or whatever, right? Like a small win. A small win would be cutting out one piece of bread. Instead of having two pieces of bread today, only have one. A small win for business would be if you reached out to five potential clients yesterday, maybe reach out to eight today. Or if you made $100 yesterday, maybe try to make $150 today, right? Like very small wins and you're starting to create momentum, then that starts to shift from this goal is impossible to this goal is possible. 
so once the goal is possible and you can start to see some results, then you want to add the timeline onto that goal. So once you set the goal, you've worked on the limiting beliefs underneath that goal, you set the goal, now it's time to develop that action plan. So I only recommend that you develop an action plan. And again, if you're working with a coach, you do this with your coach. If you're working by yourself, you do this by yourself. But to only develop an action plan, once you have started to see some results towards the goal and you believe, you believe and you have evidence and proof that that goal is possible. I can't even tell you how many action plans I created about losing weight. I can't even, I can, listen, I probably have like three books of action plans (laughs) on losing weight from juicing to exercising myself to death to yoga plans to like cutting carbs like the whole thing everything you could think of I had a plan for but I never did the work to actually believe that it was possible and I didn't push hard enough and long enough to start to see some results to prove to me that it was possible so once you've gotten over that hump of is this possible for me and that impossible goal has started to become a possible goal, not because you achieved it, but because you started to see small wins and results that you know eventually will lead up to that goal, now it's time for the action plan. And here's where the rubber meets the road, people. Here is where the skill set of consistency comes into play. So with consistency, some people do really bad with consistency, if I could just speak plainly, right? If you have a coach, it's different because your coaching sessions keep you consistent. You know somebody's checking in with you every single week to say like, hey, how did last week go? What worked? What didn't work, right? But when you're on your own, you have to figure out how you're going to keep yourself consistent. So being intrinsically motivated towards that goal, meaning you're really aligned to that goal and it's a powerful goal, it's aligned to your purpose, it's aligned to your values. I didn't say the goal is your purpose. I said it's in alignment. It's not in conflict with what you believe about life. It's not in conflict with your values. It's not in conflict with your purpose in this life. If that is fine, then you can start to see that, all right, I have permission to go forth with this goal. Let me create an action plan that will actually get me towards this goal. I started to see some results. I started to see some wins. I've demonstrated some consistency in getting those wins. Now I can start to project out to see how long is it going to take for me to lose that 30 pounds based on what I'm currently doing. If I increased what I was doing, would I get there faster? How could I get there faster? Is there a way? Should I experiment with it? So you can start to ask yourself questions so that you can figure out how long it's going to take you to get that end goal. Now, it is completely possible, at least in the business space, that, you know, if you made $1,000 this week and $1,000 next week, it's absolutely possible to then jump and make like $8,000 in the last week and get to your goal way faster. And so the goal, the, the action plan shouldn't limit you. It should, of course be open to miracles and be open to additional possibilities, but it should also be so realistic that worst case scenario, you hit the actions. If you take the actions on that action plan, you will hit your goal based on how far you project it out. So that's another thing. You set the goal. Once you have the confidence and you are consistent with getting yourself results and taking small wins to make that goal go from impossible to possible, then you develop the action plan for it. And then guess what, people? This isn't a pretty plan that sits on your on your desk, like my five books or my three books of like pages and pages and pages of stuff. Then you take action. You actually put it into place. So for my business planners who are writing business plans that are just sitting on a pretty shelf, guess what? Those plans got to go into action. And if you don't believe that the goals on that plan are possible, don't even waste your time, okay? So now we're talking about acting towards that goal. So you set the goal, you develop the action plan, and then you act. And now here is the part that is transformational, where you really start to reflect on how to become more effective as you move towards that goal. So I recommend a daily journaling practice. If you have a 90-day goal, 
or if you have a 10-year goal and you have created an action plan to achieve that goal, there are going to be opportunities for you to accelerate your success. And you need to be open enough to receive those opportunities and recognize those possibilities, right? There were things, um, and you know, regardless of your faith, but I'm just going to talk from my faith perspective. When I first launched my school back in the day, never thought I could create a multi-million dollar school. Like never even a mat was never. A, I was a teacher. I went from being a preschool teacher in a classroom to being a 25 year old CEO of a multi seven figure school. Never thought I could make that leap. But because that goal was in alignment with my purpose and because on a daily basis, I was self-reflecting on how to make that goal a reality, I was able to put myself in positions where God could just speak directly to me and kind of tell me where to go, for lack of a better word. Like I just knew intuitively what actions to take what conversations to have, where to be, who to talk to, how to get certain checks, how to how to uh, meet with certain people. There were things that I know I could have never controlled or predicted and doors that just flew open because I just happened to position myself correctly to, to get them happening. I, there was a, for example, there was um, a meeting that I took with um, an electric company, the, one of the CEOs, um, the, the VP of the electric company, and he was responsible for giving out thousands and even hundreds of thousands of dollars to people who were doing certain service projects. And so I called them, I called this electric company and I said, listen, I'm doing this school. I want you guys to be a sponsor. Um, I'm going to come up and, you know, have a meeting. This is who I want to meet with. And this is my availability, and I'll be there 2 o'clock on a Tuesday to talk about it, let's just say. I don't remember if it was a Tuesday or a Thursday, but anywho, I told them the day and the time I would be up there. I showed up. I didn't realize that this place was, like, such a huge place. Like, listen, apparently, like, these electric companies, they're, like, a billion, billion dollar agencies. And I went in there, had to go through all the security to get through. And they hustle me up for my two o'clock meeting with the VP. And the first thing he does when I get in his office is he says, how did you get here? And I said, I just called. And he said, and you got on my calendar? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing. Are you going to donate? Like, this is like, that was just, and he ended up sponsoring us for about $45,000 that first year. And so boom, I walked away with a 45k check, right? Not literally in my hand, but they were processing it for me for my venture. Don't know how that happened. But because I was open and I was self reflecting, and every day I was thinking about what do I need to do to get this thing off the ground? What do I need to do to move this goal along faster? And then I took action as soon as I got that download. That's how those kinds of doors open up, right? And so you have to be tuned in. So whether your goal is losing weight, whether your goal is building a startup, whether your goal is making your first $100,000 as a coach or as a, a business owner, or whether your goal is, um, you know, again, finding the love of your life, you want to sit down with that goal every single day. And I use journaling because journaling, in the absence of a coach, I think journaling is the second most effective way to hold yourself accountable and tap into your inner heart, into your inner voice so that you know what's going on and you know where to go and what to do. So I just journal every day. You can journal every single day. You can free write whatever comes to mind. Or you can just write your goal at the top of the page and say, how do I achieve this goal faster? And by doing that, you become open to those leaps that are going to arise, those leaps that will take you from achieving your goal in 10 years to somehow it accelerating and you getting there in one year, which is absolutely possible, right? So you want to self-reflect. Then after you self-reflect, you want to evaluate what's working. So you're self-reflecting, you're journaling, you're kind of monitoring how things are going. But then you have this evaluation, which can happen every week, every, you know, for some people it happens at the end of every month, depending on how far out your goal is. I recommend a weekly evaluation. This is, this would be, again, a time that you spend with a coach if you have a weekly coaching call. But if you're working with yourself, then you would sit down and schedule in your calendar Fridays at five o'clock. You sit down and you write what's working and what's not working. You evaluate where you are as it relates to your goal. This is your accountability. 
this helps you to really call out and to stay encouraged. It helps you to call out what's working and it helps you to stay encouraged so that you know that you are making some progress. Because what happens is we forget. We forget that like you may have, you may not have gotten a client, but you for the first time was able to confidently show up on a Facebook Live. We forget that. We forget that, um, you know, perhaps you you may have gained a pound, but you also worked out like every single day this week. So you know that it's muscle. We forget that. And so you want to evaluate where you are with your goals. And then you want to do more of what's working and change what's not working. One thing that I ask my clients every single time we're on a coaching call, and I teach you this in my Success Coach Certification Training Academy, I always teach you the protocol to ask what's working and what do we need to do more of that is so important building on and pulling out what's working because what will happen is clients and even people and us with our own goals we get stuck and we're like ah nothing's working everything is failing i don't know what to do i just want to quit i'm jumping off a bridge right like it's just done and you completely forgot that like actually there are things that are working and actually we need to build on that And so once you continue to build on what's working, then you increase those wins. And again, with those wins, those wins can then reinforce the belief that this is possible for me. And when you believe that this is possible for me, you keep on taking those wins and you keep on taking action and you keep on moving forward. And then guess what? You actually achieve that impossible goal. So I'm telling you, my friends and my sisters, those impossible goals that you have are 100% possible. But you got to reframe your thinking. You got to reframe your thinking. You got to make and have small wins. You got to self-coach yourself through the process. If you're not going to get your own coach, be your own coach. Sit down on a daily basis. Journal about what you're doing to get that insight and know what action to take to try to accelerate those results that you're seeing. Sit down and evaluate at the end of every week or at the end of every month where you are and where you desire to be. Change what's not working and then do more of what's working. Just build on it. There are so many things that are working in your life right now that you can be creating momentum around that you haven't because you've been afraid or you haven't sat down and spent the time to pull out and call out what is actually working. I know that your impossible goal is possible for you. And I know that you can coach yourself through the process. So that's what I got for you today, guys. Again, we have just launched Master Coach. I'm so excited about Master Coach. I can't even tell you. Six years, people have been asking me to launch my own training, coaching, coach training certification school. And I was like, nope, I'm not ready. I need to master, remaster these skills. I need to remaster that. I need to do this again. Like it was just, I needed to be at a place where I was comfortable and I have tried every single strategy that I share wanted to be at a place where I could say that, where I have done that, and where I'm at a place where I know what works and what doesn't work. And we all are always growing and evolving as coaches, but I finally stepped up to the plate, put this coaching school together. And so for those of you who are interested, you can visit us at SheHealsTheWorld.com and you can click on the contact me page and tell me that you're interested and we'll send you the workshop so that you can jump on board and learn more about the coaching school. Or you can email admin at sheheelstheworld.com. So thanks so much for listening. Don't feel pressure to, to get a coach or to get certified or anything like that. Because again, if you can't or if you don't desire to, you can coach yourself through these impossible goals. It is absolutely possible. But I also want to share with you the other options that are available to you to help you get there faster. All right, She Heals the World community. Thanks so much for listening and sending you lots of love. Signing off.